King Charles III has been crowned at London's Westminster Abbey on a day of Asian ceremony and military spectacle that drew on a millennium of the nation's history. Global leaders and foreign royalty on Saturday attended the event at the Abbey scene of royal coronation since William the Conqueror was crowned in 1066 at the start of a day of celebrations. The ceremony, the first since Queen Elizabeth was crowned in 1953, was attended by about 2,000 guests. King Charles was crowned at 12 p.m. at about 12 p.m. to the acclamation of God save the King. The service was presided over by Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury. Charles III is Supreme Governor of the Church of England as well as Monarch of the UK and 14 Commonwealth realms. In a reminder of Britain's turbulent religious past, the monarch opened the service with an oath. King Charles III's wife Camilla was crowned in Westminster Abbey, capping her public evolution from royal mistress to queen consort to queen in her own right. Camilla, 75, was crowned by Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, moments after Charles' coronation as sovereign of the United Kingdom and 14 of the Commonwealth realms. May thy servant Camilla, who wears this crown, be filled by thine abundant grace and with all princely virtues. Reign in her heart, O King of love, that being certain of thy protection, she may be crowned with thy gracious favour through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The scepter, brought by the Bishop of Dover, the rod of equity and mercy, brought by Lord Charters. We're now being joined by public affairs analyst Nick Agule, who is in the United Kingdom. Hello, Nick. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nick. Good, Good to have you join us. All right, Nick, let us in on the mood um, in the UK now that King Charles has been crowned. What's the mood like? I would say that the mood in the UK is mixed because um, a lot of people may not know uh, just as the monarchy receives reverence and love from UK people, there is also a huge number of people, and they are growing in numbers, who think that the monarchy is outdated and the UK should become a republic and therefore not be under the king or the queen as it may be. So that, that is the mood. Then, uh, of course, uh, weather-wise, uh, yesterday we had a bright sunshine. It was beautiful. And incidentally, tomorrow being Sunday, is also said to be beautiful. But the element decided to rain on the King's Parade today. So we've not seen any bit of sunshine at all. And as people may be watching on TV, uh, it's been raining as well. Uh, that has not stopped the ceremonies of crowning the king from going ahead. Of course, the king has been crowned and he has returned to uh, his official residence, which is Buckingham Palace, and has uh, been greeted by the armed forces of the United Kingdom, the Commonwealth, and other nations that are part of the, the Commonwealth. And uh, he is going to take a rest and then by... Uh, in the next uh, few minutes, uh, by exactly half two, he will have to come out then to attend the, the state banquet for visiting dignitaries. A lot of them 
and uh, leaders of nations, including our own President Buhari. Uh, so the king is going to host them to a luncheon, and that is going to begin by half two. All right, taking a cue from what you said, um, we have reports that some Republican protesters were arrested ahead of the ceremony. Let's get your comment on that. Yes, so um, the police forces in the UK prepare for and expect that there will be disruption coming from Republicans. So like I did indicate, um, the reception of the monarchy in the UK is split even though majority are still uh, for the monarchy there is a growing number who are republicans who believe that this kingdom should become a republic and um, there should no longer be a monarchy or even if uh, the royal family want to be in existence the king or the queen as it may be should not be the head of state because the king is the head of state of the United Kingdom, while the prime minister is a head of government. So there is a fine divide in terms of responsibility. So when you come to executive powers, the, the, the king is actually uh, like the president of the United Kingdom, while he delegates his executive powers to the prime minister. Uh, so there are a lot of people who are against that. And, uh, and uh, yours, yours truly, I think I'm part of all that because I don't think that in the 21st century, uh, where we are now in the age of uh, computers, artificial intelligence, we have landed people on the moon and all of that, that uh, a particular family should be the one that once a child is born in that family, then everything is for them, right. regardless of whether they work hard or not for. So, I mean, if we are in a society that preaches against discrimination, I don't see why this is not discrimination. If a particular family is the one that all the assets of this country are said to belong to them, and then uh, children born in that family begin to receive uh, a treatment that is different from any other child born in this country. But anyway, that is what it is. So, uh, however, everybody is giving room to say what they want and also to come out with their protest. But if you are destructive, if you become destructive to public order, then you have fallen short of the law. And of course, the police are going to pick you up off the street so that uh, law and order will be restored. All right, Nick. So what do you think this means for us now that uh, King Charles has been crowned? Before we let you go, what do you think this means for Nigeria, the relationship uh, going forward? I think this means a lot for Nigeria. Uh, President Buhari is currently in the UK, uh, to, hosted by the king, and I expect him to extract some uh, promises from the, from the king as regards Nigeria. Number one, uh, we know that a lot of corrupt practices in Nigeria, people stealing Nigeria's money, are bringing it to come and uh, hide in the UK. Uh, I expect President Buhari to speak directly to the king and say, well, I have few days left in office, but even if I'm no longer in office, give your cooperation to whoever succeeds me and try and get the prime minister, who is your head of government, to put a stop to people who have access to Nigeria's public finances and are stealing it and bringing it here in the UK. And then, of course, I expect uh, President Buhari to get some commitments from the king with respect to things like uh, military support and all of that because you see the nigerian military is so stretched fighting all sorts of insurgencies all over the country uh, by the time the president took over government in 2015 uh, northeast was the boiling point as of today the the count there are boiling points in all the six ge geopolitical zones in, in in nigeria and there's nothing wrong in uh, taking a uh, technical uh, support, uh, be it by hardware or so, from uh, what used to be a colonial master, because Nigeria still has a very strong links with the United Kingdom. And I expect that on, com on the commercial side, I expect President Buhari to, to, to speak to the king with respect to how the United Kingdom is going to help Nigeria to unlock value from our renewable energy sources, because as we speak, Nigeria is generating 3,000 megawatts of electricity. 
And the electricity that uh, President Buhari is enjoying here in London today right. is 730,000 megawatts. The United Kingdom generates 730,000 megawatts. Yes, and yes. Nigeria is just generating three. Just imagine the electricity deficit that we have. All right, and of course, I will, I will expect uh, President Buhari to also uh, speak to um, uh, King Charles as regards uh, commercial flights between Nigeria and the United Kingdom. As we speak today, it is only British Airways, one single airline that is flying direct flights from Nigeria's capital of Abuja to United Kingdom's capital of London. One airline. How is that possible? We have Nigeria Airlines, we have other competing airlines, but only one has monopolized that, that route. So whatever fare they charge, passengers have no choice than to book so long as they want a direct flight. So these are the kind of discussions that I expect President Buhari to table before uh, King Charles and try and extract promises uh, on behalf of Nigeria. All right, Nick, thank you very much. Thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of your day, Nick. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.